So one of the first things you notice when you walk into the property is that we've got this green vine coming up over our front arch. <clears throat> and this is a grapevine. So it doesn't fruit here in Dubai because we don't get enough of a winter, but you can still eat the leaves and it provides lovely shade. And you can see this one has grown so well, it's gone up over across into our date palm. So as we come into the yard, at the front, we've got a little bit of a food forest going on. We've got aloe vera here, which is both edible and uh, medicinal. We've got an orange tree, <coughs> which does produce fruit. Last season it produced fruit. Um, and then we've got a pomegranate, which is perfect for this region. They grow fantastically well, um, produce amazing fruit. Down here we've got a little curry plant, which has a really pungent leaf that you can use in cooking. Beside it there's a tiny banana, um, which is making a comeback after getting um, a lot of heat stress over the summer. In the middle beside the orange tree, got an olive tree it's actually kind of hard to see the trees with so much greenery behind and then here we've got a lime tree which produces fruit for much of most of the year you can see there's still some fruit here so it's just those little those little limes along our side wall we've got a tiny fig which actually has some fruit on it which the birds love to eat but produces lovely fruit um, the figs currently getting shaded out by this massive black mulberry which believe it or not we just planted this here seven months ago um, and it was basically the same size as the fig you've just seen um, didn't even come to the top of the wall and now it's towering well above it you can see um, I used the side of the house as a nursery area um, that's because the way our house is positioned and the sun angle means that these this side of the house gets the lovely morning sun which is a bit softer and then it's shaded in the afternoon when the sun is a bit harsher so let's have a look at what we've got growing here tomatoes um, hollyhock black which is a pollinating attracting flower billy buttons same thing we've got a variety of tomatoes wopsiconium peach um, then we've got an italian romano bean we've got green grape tomatoes Juan Flamme tomatoes, pink bumblebee tomatoes, Tommy Toe tomatoes, aren't they wonderful names? Garlic chives haven't germinated. Um, we've got sunflower seeds just starting to come up there, those big ones. And we've got early green broccoli just here. And then we've got double yield cucumber, which is doing fantastically. Echium simplex is another pollinating attracting flower. Uh, Nasturtium Empress of India is both a pollinating attractor and edible, fantastic in salads. Um, Sicilian purple cauliflower, which, which actually produces a purple cauliflower head. This is Bomba, my bon bon. Uh, then we've got some lemongrass here. That, that sapling there is a white jasmine tree. We've just picked that out of the yard. And we've got Alaskan Scarlet Nasturtium, Ladybird Nasturtium hasn't germinated yet. We've got some Kale, Fort Hook Shard, Rocket, um, Blue Borage, which is a fantastic little plant for attracting pollinators. A Neem Sapling, we've got Catnip, Arugula, Australian Yellow Leaf Lettuce. Down here we've got Courgette. Just starting. So what I've done to be able to pot up all these seeds is I took soil from our compost over there and mixed it in with some sand um, and then I saved the seeds by um, taking the seeds out of fruit and veg that I had bought at the farmers market here that was really nice and I, I wanted to try growing it or I swapped seeds with other gardeners here in Dubai um, so really this has cost me next to nothing to be able to produce all of these seedlings and eventual fruit and vegetables because I produce the compost myself and the seeds have all come from, from swapping or from food that would have otherwise gone into the bin I guess if you're a different household.